This is the Trident 800, the successor to the Trident 660. But it's not all as it seems. It's not your typical facelift. This update is more like a whole new bike. But actually, it's not really new. So in this video, we're gonna take a closer look to learn exactly what we have here. So we've got some big news coming from Triumph at the moment with up to 29 new models coming for the next riding season. I probably should have held off on buying that street triple. Uh, but this week was the Trident 800. Now, I'm not really someone that cares so much about specifications, so I'm not going to rattle those off to you. Probably seen lots of videos already do that. In this video, what I'd like to do is break down the bike, what we can see, what I know, and really understand what we're getting with this bike. And with that, we're also going to consider what the company does from an engineering perspective and business perspective with this whole platform. So, deep dive, let's go. The first thing I want to do is praise the exhaust system. It looks like it's carried over from the Tiger Sport 800. And the good thing is that when you look at this accessory model, we can see that there is a clamp on this OEM exhaust system, which means we can likely swap this for any third party NCAN. Now this model gets a whole load of front end updates from radial mounted brake calipers instead of the axial mounted to the big piston separate function forks with adjustability as standard. Besides the adjustability, the front end is, is essentially a swap from the Daytona 660. We can see that the mudguard here is also exactly the same. Now I'm not complaining because these brake calipers have proven to be very effective and it's an upgrade for the Trident. And from Triumph's perspective, to commonize parts between models, reduce the variation of stock that we have to manage, manufacture, all those logistics is simplified with this common component. As for the power plant, it's transplanted straight from the Tiger Sport 800. Specifications are all looking exactly the same. I expect the differences are going to be potentially in the mapping, but mostly in the tuning of the rider modes. But what I actually want to consider here is this engine. So this is actually not a derivative of the 660cc engine, and you can tell by looking at the casing. Also, if we want to consider the internals, the bore of the 660 is only 74 millimeters, and we have a much reduced stroke. And this is generally a much lower power engine. So where does the 800cc come from? Well, the Daytona uses the Trident 660 engine, but with some adjustments to pull some extra power. I believe it's actually derived from the Street Triple 765, at least elements of it, especially the lower end. You can see that the covers are almost identical. We have a matching bore, but an adjustment to the stroke, and that's going to be with the new crankshaft, which would have needed some rebalancing of the engine. Now, if these casings are identical, at least in certain areas, it means that some of the bracketry may be common, not just between the Daytona and the Trident, but also the Street Triple. And this highlights the fact that we do also have the Street Triple belly pan on the Trident 800. So seeing how the evolution of the Street Triple 765 engine is being, it's, it, they've managed to claw out 5 and 10 brake horsepower every, every new model. Um, I believe that the engine we have now on the Trident 800 and the Tiger Sport 800, um, when we eventually get a nice new facelift, please, on the Daytona 600 to a Daytona 800, I think they're going to squeeze a bit of extra brake horsepower out of that. I mean, the 765 already has uh, 118, 120 brake horsepower in the R in the R version, so 130 in the RS. I don't think we'll go as high as that, but I think it's fairly reasonable to at least claw out 120 for the Daytona. 
Now at first glance, this bike still definitely looks like a Trident, which is great, but you can see it's definitely had a much more aggressive facelift. And when I saw this, it actually reminds me of a period of time when I was working on the Trident. You see, just at the end of the concept phase, I believe they had a meeting with a focus group. This is something where they do where they uh, lay out some designs and they show it to some people and they get their opinions. And around this time, I believe that focus group did not go so well. So end of concept phase, we're about to look into begin designing for real for production or prototype. And uh, there were some crisis meetings and then the designers were called in from Italy and everywhere else. And what ended up happening is a week later we had a whole bunch of new designs. Everything from like the rear bodywork being modified slightly in different areas, the number plate being moved from the swing arm back up to the rear frame and tweaks around the front of the bike. And <clears throat> the problem was that the bike was kind of having an identity crisis. You had this round front end, but then a kind of sporty rear end or everything was too round. There's all these conflicts, at least in my opinion. Eventually it came to settle on the 660 that we know now. But there were some designs where, you know, the rear end looked really nice. It was just a little bit too sporty. And if you were to tweak the front end to be a little bit more spoy, I think that would have been really nice. And I think that's exactly what they've done here. They've they've definitely taken that sporty rear end and tweaked the front end to make it work better. So really good job. So as we move back to the outriggers, we'll see that the design of this is extremely similar to the 660. But there is a slight change in angle on the rear frame tube, which is a clear indication that we do have a different frame or a different rear frame on the 800 as to the 660 Trident. I strongly believe this is the Daytona 660 rear frame. This is the only clip that we can actually see the frame underneath the seat. And I guess the point is to show off the USB for accessories but I'm very familiar with the frame of the Trident 660 and the Daytona and this is with no doubt the Daytona 660 rear frame. There may be some small modifications somewhere, but the main bulk of it is going to be the same. Now, as I've already shown a few times in this video, Triumph is commonizing uh, components between the Trident and the Daytona and even the Street Triple. And this is no different. We can see for the rear frame that the rear bodywork is all identical to the Daytona, just with different decals. That is with the exception of the black infill, the under tray. Since we don't have the number plate hanger underneath the seat in this case, it's mounted on the swing arm. There is now a infill without the holes and the mounting features for the rear number plate. But aside from that, we'll see that we even have the accessory seat that is common between these models. So this bike is gonna share the bodywork, the rear seat cowl, the accessory seats, also the passenger grab rails. These are all going to be common accessories between all models. So we start this video with the question, what exactly is the Trident 800? And I think we've covered it with various different topics throughout this video. But to summarize, the 660 had its original frame and the Daytona came later. It's kind of like migrating the uh, 660 Trident onto the Daytona framework and then from there um, adopting as much as they can from the Daytona's design to revamp the Trident. Uh, with that though they're also upgrading to 800 cc so they take the engine from the Tiger Sport. Uh, that Tiger Sport is derived from the 765 engine so that gives us multiple bikes to now take from for the styling. Now the Trident DNA remains in the front in the tank area, the midsection of the motorcycle, but the rear end, essentially Daytona, the front end is also Daytona, uh, the engine, Tiger Sport, but then the belly pan from the Street Triple 765. All this together with the updated uh, design, the styling, the facelift of the uh, Trident section, it's allowed them to make a whole new motorcycle with very minimal engineering, in my opinion. So I think this is uh, a really good experiment and a really good project that Triumph has worked on and I think it's going to be an example of how you can get a lot of cost savings from your projects 
to then give back to the customer. So the benefit that we have now, because uh, this is not a critique, this is not like a, a hit piece video of saying, oh, they've just taken everything from all these other bikes. No, no, no. This is actually a good thing. They've, they've brought down the cost of manufacture and production and they're given back to us because this is a budget level bike and it comes with full adjustability, front and rear suspension. You've got an engine which is essentially from a Street Triple 765, which is a premium model bike. You've got accessories from the Street Triple as standard in the belly pan. And then all the accessories around that, say the seat cowl, the accessory seat, the grab handles, um, they're just common across all the different models. An example of good engineering practice, good, good design to make the most of your components. So anyway, this has been my breakdown of the Trident 800. If you do like this kind of content and you want to see more, maybe this kind of review format on other bikes that are being announced or that have been released, more of a deep dive into the components and the engineering behind them, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Because I'm not really sure if there's much interest, but it's been really fun for me to do. So, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.